Avengers Infinity War is coming out at the end of April, and I want to get into some potential spoilers for the film. Now, normally I would not cover anything like this because these are from 4chan, but there's something about these spoilers that are eerily accurate based on some recent information we've gotten about some upcoming toy releases from the Marvel toy line for the film Infinity War. So, there's something to this. And if there wasn't something to it, I wouldn't even be covering it. So, let's go ahead and let everybody know now. We may have some spoilers here. Potential spoilers for Avengers Infinity War. Click off. You have been warned. Here we go. Now, first and foremost, this post popped up on 4chan. The date was November 30th, 2017. Okay, so this came out months ago. And these things pop up all the time. And I usually don't cover them because a lot of them are wrong. Now, once in a while, you will have some legitimate leaks come out on 4chan. For example, there was a leak for the 2016 Ghostbusters movie where the entire plot had come out on there. Um, and it's pretty much what happened in the movie. <clears throat> so it's hit or miss. But I thought this would be a fun thing to cover. Now, um, I'm going to get to the validity of this here in a moment. Because like I said, there's one thing here that's really, really accurate um, based on the information that we have. So, says here, Steve Rogers has adopted the identity of Nomad and is leading the Secret Avengers formed by Black Widow and Falcon. That's, of course, in Wakanda, presumably. Scarlet Witch, Hawkeye, and Ant-Man went their separate ways or their different ways. Ant-Man is not in the movie in any significant way. Even though that's a weird one to me because I could have sworn that I saw Ant-Man in some of the promotional material. Um, I haven't seen him in the trailer. So, that there could be something to it. Of course, Ant-Man and the Wasp comes out just a couple months after Infinity War. And that's supposed to take place before Infinity War. Um, so there you go. It says here, Steve and his team have minor roles. Early on, they rescue Scarlet Witch and Vision from the children of Thanos and send them to Wakanda so Black Panther and his sister Shuri can extract the Mind Stone from the Vision and guard it against Thanos. Now that all makes sense, especially since whoever wrote this has to either have legitimate information or is a really good, knowledgeable fan of Marvel because... I, I presume that a lot of fans didn't really know about Black Panther's like heritage and his family, and this dude seems to know what he's talking about, um, like you know, with his sister and whatnot. Like that all kind of makes sense. It says here that when Thanos forces invade Wakanda in the end, they return to help. Steve is the one that managed to kill Thanos' main enforcer Corvus uh, Glaive after he kills Vision and defeats everyone uh, that tries to stop him. Now. I want to clarify some things here without going into too much here. The children of Thanos are what was referred to in the comics as the Black Order. Comics Explained did a wonderful video covering their powers and what they do, so check that out over on Rob's channel. Just type in uh, Black Thanos' Black Order or Children of Thanos Explained. And it's kind of a more recent storyline. Like, the Black Order was not a part of the original Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity War storyline in the comics. But for the movie... The Russos have decided to put them in there, probably so they can be guys that the Avengers can defeat throughout the film. It says here, Thanos attacks the Asgardian ship in search of the Space Stone, which low-key trades for Thanos' pardon and the lives of the refugees, becoming Thanos' advisor. First of all, this matches up perfectly to what I thought was going to happen, because at the end of Thor Ragnarok, they're on the ship. We saw the post credit scene of the big ship approaching. That is, of course, Thanos. This all makes sense. The Space Stone is, of course, the Tesseract, the Cosmic Cube. It says here, Thor is severely beaten and cast out into space by Thanos, where he is later found by the Guardians of the Galaxy, who have been following Thanos' trail of destruction across the galaxy. That makes sense, because we saw that... Not just in the trailer that came out, but also in that leaked trailer from last year, we saw Thor meeting them. Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, and Mantis go to nowhere to consult with the Collector. This was also leaked footage that came out. But they find him being tortured by Thanos for the Reality Stone. Meanwhile, Thor, Rocket, and Teen Groot visit the Dwarf King El Eltree, uh, who's played by Peter Dinklage, who forged Mjolnir for weapons. Now... Uh, the rumor of Peter Dinklage being in this movie has been rumored for a while. I haven't seen anything official about it, but it has been rumored, and 
This would make sense. Now, it says here that Eltree has also forced the Infinity Gauntlet, and Thanos has, has cut off his hand, so he cannot build something powerful enough to destroy it. Thor finds an axe, J I can't pronounce this, uh, Jarnborn, Jarn and made from the same metal as Mjolnir, and it's unfinished, so Team Groot gives him his wood to make the handle. This matches up with the promotional material of Thor using the axe with the... You know, with the wooden kind of handle. So that all makes sense. He probably got it from there. It says here, there's a gag that, although Eutree is considered a dwarf, he's actually massive by mortal standards. Thor goes up on his knee. Thor also doesn't get his eye back. He wears the eye patch for the entire movie. Yeah, he's missing an eye. I remember that. And uh, in the trailer for Thor Ragnarok, they actually CGI'd his eye back in so they wouldn't spoil it. Just like how in the Civil War trailer, they didn't show Spider-Man till the very end. You know, they do that sometimes. So it's a misdirection. Now... Again, next post. Iron Man takes the spotlight heading into space with Doctor Strange to meet Thor in the Guardians of the Galaxy and stop Thanos. Spider-Man tags along and ends up getting injured in battle. Well, that that injury is just what they had in the leaked trailer. I don't think that guy's... Go if this guy's coming up with this, it, he probably got it from the trailer. But based on what we've seen in the trailer, the release trailer, not the, not the leaked one. Based on what we've seen, that actually makes sense because I do believe that sort of you know, kind of brown, orange planet or whatever is not Earth. I think that is Titan. So I think there will be a point in the film where they fight him on Titan. It says here, Black Panther unites the Wakandan tribe leaders, including Mibaku, to defend Wakanda and brings Winter Soldier out of cryosleep to help fight Thanos' forces, providing him with a new arm. Hawkeye also joins the battle in the end. Now that one I have to question because we saw, spoilers, in the post credit scene for Black Panther, him coming out of cryosleep. So... Either they're going to show the same scene again, or they're just going to say he's out already. So, there you go. Bruce Banner makes it back to Earth in an escape pod, but can't turn into the Hulk anymore. He pilots the Hulkbuster armor during the Battle of Wakanda and fights Thanos' strongest enforcer, Cole Obsidian, who tears the Hulkbuster apart. Eventually turns, He eventually turns into the Hulk again and bursts out of the Hulkbuster and defeats Cole Obsidian. Now, this is the one I want to point to. There has been legitimate toy leaks this is legitimate of the hulk inside the hulk buster of bruce banner in the hulk buster so either this guy got a lucky guess or he has some information i, I i'm gonna go either way it could just be a lucky guess here a lot of these are fake Doctor Strange develops a rivalry with Thanos' smartest enforcer, Ebony Maw. Now, this makes sense because in the comics, Ebony Maw is Doctor Strange's, like, you know, rival, I guess you can say. After he breaks into the San Sanctum Santorum and uses his psychic powers to mindfuck everyone and steal the time zone. Time stone. Um, I just find it hard to believe he's going to steal the time zone. Time. Why do I keep saying time zone? Time stone in this movie so early on. Maybe it takes place later, though. Doctor Strange becomes good friends with both Iron Man and Spider-Man. Thor also gets along well with Star-Lord. Lots of humor come from the Iron Man, Drax, and Spider-Man Teen Groot interactions. That's expected. Valkyrie has a minor appearance, having led the Asgardian refugees to safety after Loki's betrayal and Thor's apparent death. Wong, Wong's appearance is also minor. Hanging out at the Santorum when Ebony Maw attacks and when Strange and Banner later meet Iron Man. That's in the trailer. No surprise there. I heard that Wong dies from a different leak. Don't know if that's true either. Red Skull also briefly appears, having been stranded in space since World War II, where he was seemingly disintegrated by the Space Stone. Now, I was skeptical when I read that, but I remember reading that there was talk for... I think Kevin Feige or somebody said it, that the Red Skull may not be dead. So, the, the question is, if he is alive... Why is he there? Is he going to come back and be a villain in the next Captain America movie? What's going to be his role in this film? I, they wouldn't put him in this little leak otherwise. And now it says here, this is one that's been talked about for a long time. Thor, I'm oh, sorry, Thor. Thanos kills Gamora to get the Soul Stone. Its Guardian reveals that one can only wield it by sacrificing the soul of a loved one. Since Gamora is one of Thanos' daughters, he loves her as an asset, not as a person. And her death grants him control of the Soul Stone. It's also what compels Nebula to join the others in order to avenge her sister. So, Nebula was already kind of on the team to begin with anyways. But, I find this very interesting because what they're saying makes sense. Like, the Soul Stone is the most dangerous of the Infinity Stones because you have to make that big sacrifice to use it properly. So... I could totally see this happening. Now, obviously, they're going to bring her back to life somehow before Guardians 3. I 
I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. I don't think she's going to stay dead, but uh, this would be a, a truly heart-wrenching moment in the film of Thanos going so far as to kill his own daughter. You know, that to me is very interesting. But that this seems, again, if it wasn't for that toy leak of Bruce Banner piloting the Hulk Buster, I wouldn't have not even covered this. Either this dude has really some inside information is making up the rest of it, or he has a lot of inside information, or he got lucky, and that's very lucky to be able to guess that. What do you think about these spoilers? Let me know in the comments. And I'm excited. And remember, this is just part one. There's going to be another Infinity War film. We don't know the name of it yet, but it's coming out next year. Avengers. It was called Avengers Infinity War Part 2. That name has been dropped. We don't have a name for it yet, but we'll find out soon. Thanks so much. Talk to you all soon. Hope you have a good one.